Hello everybody and welcome in today's episode of the Racebook Show. I'm your host Guillaume Alvarez and I'm here to keep you updated with the latest from the world of karting. In today's program, we're going to give you the news that caught up our attention. We're going to review as well the opening round of the WSK Supermaster Series of last weekend in Adria, Italy. We're going to then preview the upcoming Yami Winter Cup in Valencia, Spain, as well as the round 3 and 4 of the Supercard USA Winter Series taking place this weekend on the Homestad circuit of Miami, Florida. Today's show is brought to you by Minus273, where form equals function. Find out more about Travis Anuto's winning globes on Minus273.biz. Apart from the racing in Adria, this hasn't been the busiest week in terms of karting news, but the CRG factory has recently published an interview of its president, Giancarlo Tinini, available now on the official website. The article focuses on the views of Mr. Tinini about the evolution of karting, suggesting, for instance, that the European and the World Championship could actually swap formats, with the World event having more than just one round, as it was the case before, to better promote karting. Mr. Tinini also shares his concern about the increase of costs and says that reducing the number of days in international events could be a way to make them less expensive and maybe attract more competitors in the future. Do you agree or not with his opinion? Let us know by dropping a comment in the discussion. Now, the biggest topic in this episode concerns WSK. One week after the Champions Cup, the circuit of Adria in the north of Italy was the scene of round one of the Super Masters series. With 186 drivers and exciting races on track, the kickoff of the series has been a true success despite difficult weather conditions with rain, wind, fog and cold temperatures all weekend. But before we move to the results, let's ride on board Forza Racing driver Dylan Novantov who takes us for a special night lap of the Adria Karting Raceway with the commentary of Jake Sanson. Night time at Adria Kart Raceway, let's ride on board with Delano Vantov. Flat down the main straight, you can keep accelerating through turn one, a dash of runoff on the exit to correct, then ease off the power and dab the brakes, but keep momentum through the tighter apex for turn two. Then a short dash to the left for three, you can put the power down sooner than you think as the flick to the right gives you a chance to storm out of the apex. Once down the straight, brake hard into five, but stay off the curves, flirt with the inside line. You can then carry a massive amount of speed through the right-hander, maybe a blip of the throttle to balance the car. Quite a fast hairpin coming up, you'll need to slow the car, but not as much as you think to keep momentum high throughout the turn, then bleed back on the power as you exit. Two fast lefts follow, you won't be on the brakes, but you need core strength to hold the cart on the line as you turn in. Move the cart to the middle of the circuit for braking for the final right hairpin, get back on the power as soon as you can, hop over the curb on the inside of the left, but stay off it for the final bend, coaxing the throttle as you go so you can scream down the main straight and onto another brilliant lap of Adria. Thank you, El Dilano, and good luck for the next one. On Sunday, Lorenzo Trovzanuto reminded everyone why he's the reigning world champion. With his new HTP car team, the Italian driver won the OK final from 7 on the grid to become the first leader of the 2019 classification. Harry Thompson also had produced an even more impressive recovery race from 24 to second place before a penalty for a wrong position of his front fairing cost him the podium. And that's another unlucky ending for the British driver after already facing trouble at the Champions Cup. The Dutchman, Cass Havercourt, was finally given second place in front of Dexter Patterson and Taylor Barnard. And in standings, Lorenzo Travzanuto is leading the field in front of Havercourt and Patterson. In the OK Junior, the 16 laps of the final have given us a thriller race from start to finish with battle happening at every level of the field. On track, it was first the Spaniard, Josep Marti, that crossed the line first before being handed a 10-second penalty for what was considered as a bad maneuver on William Silverholm in the last lap. Eventually, the Brazilian Rafael Chavez Camara was named the winner of the class in front of Robert de Haan and Thomas Tenbrique. In the classification, the top three stays the same, with Chavez Camara already having a good mattress of points in the lead. Finally, the third final of the day, the 16th mini, was won by Rashid Aldaheri from 8 on the grid, with the Belgian driver Hayan Eichmanns taking the second place after a fierce battle against Dimitri Madviv. Unfortunately, the NAD driver found himself penalized for his front fairing and sent back to ninth position. His fellow countryman Maximilian Popov recovered third position in front of Alex Powell and William McIntyre, fifth for his first appearance in WSK. Thanks to his win, Aldaheri is leading the provisional classification in front of Eichmanns and Kirill Kutskov. 
For more information and results, you can find our report on the Resports.com website as well as the current state of the standings for each class. For the next round of the WSK Supermaster Series, we will be heading to the South Gala Karting Circuit of Lonato from February 22nd to 24. And once again, this is an event that you'll be able to follow on the Racebox website with reports published every day and also a special page prepared for you with WSK Promotions live timing for Friday and Saturday and live streaming for Sunday's final. And by the way, the video footage that you saw on screen was brought to you by WSK Promotion and Monza Informa. Thanks very much for that. For this next part, let's talk briefly about the upcoming installment of the Supercard USA Winter Series. In the Racebox Show episode on January 17, available on the YouTube channel and website of the Racebox.com, we have reviewed the start of the series on the Homestead circuit of Miami, Florida. This weekend, round 3 and 4 will take place on the same venue, but this time the layout of the track will be reversed and the race will be run in the opposite direction. We will also have 11 classes on track, the Micro and the Mini Swift, the X30 Junior, Senior and Master, the KA100 Junior and Senior mixed together, the Pro and the Master Shifter also mixed together, and finally, the Briggs 206 Senior and Master on track at the same time as well. For the schedule of the event, Friday will be reserved to practice with 5 sessions per class all throughout the day. Saturday will be all about round 3, with qualifying pre-finals last chance qualifiers that will allow 14 more drivers to enter the finals, welcoming 44 names on the grid, and on Sunday, round 4 will run under the same program. One last information to give you, Supercat USA has recently announced the renewal of the partnership they have with two times F1 World Champion and former Indy 500 winner Emerson Fittipaldi that will be providing special Fittipaldi wheels as part of the prize package. Those gifts will be offered to the winners of this year's Scusa Winter Series, first in the X30 Senior Class and as well in the Pro Master Shifter categories using the new Yame 175cc engines. And to conclude on this part, a big thank you again to Flying Lap Media for the nice video footage of the Amstad Miami circuit that you have seen on screen. Last but not least, the third edition of the Yami Winter Cup is organized this weekend in Valencia by karting promoter RGMMC. This event has become over the years a classic rendezvous for many drivers before the start of the Yami Euro Series. Up from 170 drivers last year, three of the four categories in this year's event have been completely sold out for weeks with several drivers on the waiting list. In total, there will be more than 200 names from 16 countries ready to warm up the tarmac of the Cartodromo de Guerrero during three days of intense racing. And talking about burning some rubber on track, let's find out how the Spanish junior champion Mari Boya is doing on home soil. Here he comes for a flying lap around the circuit of Chiva with the commentary of Jake Sanson. Let's go on a lap of the Lucas Guerrero car join in Valencia with Jose Maria Naval on Boya. Out of the final chicane and down the main straight, you're carrying plenty of speed up to the first corner. You need to try and carry about 100 kilometers an hour speed through that right-hander. It does open out on the exit, but you need to balance it and get close to the apex as you drift back out. Now into three, tight hairpin into a chicane. It's a tricky part of the course, this, as you try and balance as much speed as you can through the right-hander, carrying nearly 2G through a triple right-hander. Now into the tight left, and you're building the speed. One two and then a third left-hander as you carry the speed throughout. You're now going to hit a heavy braking zone for the hairpin. Into the left-hander, try and kiss the curb on the inside line if you can, then out through the right-hander. Again, building lots of speed as you keep turning right. And now about 2G of force as you hold the throttle, plant it onto the back straight. You're going to hit a massive 120 kilometers an hour, keeping the car planted through that double right kink and then lots of curb to turn in for the right, left, right that finishes the lap. A cracking lap from Boya on home soil. Muchas gracias, Mary. That really gives the tone of what to expect this weekend. The Yami Winter Cup will follow the CIK FIA regulations with four categories on track. The X30 Mini, the Junior, the Senior and the Super Shifter. The winner in each class will be awarded the complete free season in the 2019 Yami Euro Series. Other prices include entry fee, free practice day, two sets of stick tires and one liter of oil. Drivers coming in second and third position will also be awarded one race entry fee for the 2019 Yami Euro Series. A new engine system has also been decided for the Mini class. From this year, the promoter will no longer provide teams with engines from the pool system as it was done before, which means that those willing to compete in this category will be free to provide their own engine. Also, because of the new obligation for international events to use tires homologated by the CIK FIA, the compounds for this year will no longer be provided by Comet Tires, but by the manufacturing company MG. That's a change that applies as well to the entire season of the Yame Euro Series. Regarding the drivers, who would you put your money on? That's a good question because we have a few interesting names to play with this weekend. First of all, Joseph Marty, 
what you want to watch in the juniors. After this great performance but disappointing result in Adria, no doubt that the Spaniard will give the 100% to perform well in front of his peers. British driver Awan Walker is another one who knows his way around the track, where he won his class at the premier edition of the Spanish Winter Series last January. In the seniors, the list of contenders is simply impressive. Look out for the Dutchman Joey van Sputteren, but also last year's class winner Clayton Ravenscroft, the Yame International Final winner Joe Turney, but also Mary Boya, who won the 2018 Winter Cup in the junior class, his fellow countryman Isidro Gomez, and as well the 2018 Junior Euro Series winner Lewis Gilbert. And let's not forget to mention in the Super Shift class the presence of reigning Euro Series title winner Thierry Delry, one of the most experienced and successful drivers in Yame classes over the past seasons. Finally, to help you follow this year's Yame Winter Cup by RGMMC, a special page will be available on theresports.com with live timing on Friday, a live streaming on Saturday and Sunday, and of course, all reports published every day to keep you up to date with the results. So that's where we leave this week's episode of the Racebox Show. Thank you so much again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Racebox and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I'm your host Guillaume Alvarez and I see you soon for the next episode. Take care. Bye bye.